This is a video about a monostable, specifically a 555 monostable, which is this little circuit here, which I made earlier in Best Blue Peter style. And the first thing I'd like you to note is you should be able to draw a monostable. So, so that I put my money where my mouth is, I'm actually going to draw one here for you. And uh, notice that I'm drawing it as a freehand diagram. So I have a 9 volt power supply. I have my 555 chip, which I'm drawing as a rectangle. And I'm going to label it as 555. And this is something you should be able to do as part of your GCSE course. I've got my 0 volt rail, which is going to run down here. Okay, so that's my 0 volt rail for my battery, my 9 volt positive, and my chip in the middle here. I've got an input, which comprises of a resistor. Now this resistor is a, called a pull-up resistor. It has a value of 10K, and that's this resistor just here. It has a push button, which is this symbol, which in this case is the yellow push button just here, which attaches to ground just there, like this. This input goes into the input to my 555, so I've drawn a dot just there, and it goes into pin 2. So I've labeled that as pin 2, and I would expect you to know these numbers. It has a timing component, which is made up of a resistor, which is this resistor here. And then that connects, and I jump my wires over, which I think you're not probably supposed to do these days, but I do. And a capacitor, which in this case is an electrolytic capacitor. So that's the positive side, which is this capacitor here. They're connected together with this orange wire, which is this connection here. And they go across to pin 6 and pin 7, 7, 6, like that. They're all connected together. That's my timing. My 555 needs a power supply. So that's pin 8, which is that red wire just there. It needs the reset pin held to logic 1, which is this red wire just here, which comes down to pin 4. It needs a 0 volt wire, which is this black one here, which goes to pin 1. And it needs a little capacitor here, which goes to pin 5, which is non-electrolytic, so it's that symbol. And it has a value of 10 nanofarads. And then my output, which in this case is represented by my LED, comes from pin 3. And that's my LED symbol with the arrows on, so it gives out light. And it has a resistor, which in this case is 470 ohms. And you should be able to draw that circuit out fairly um, easily. This is an interesting circuit. Note that I have three resistors doing three different jobs. This is just an aside. This 10K resistor here is a pull-up resistor, so it's keeping the input logic one when the switch isn't connected. This resistor here is a current limiting resistor to limit the current through the LED. And this resistor here is a timing resistor, which I haven't given a value to yet, but it's R, and this is a timing capacitor. So that's the three jobs of resistors. Current limiting, pull up and pull down, and timing. Right, so there's my, there's my circuit drawn out quite nicely. So the next question is, what does the monostable do? Well, what the monostable does is it times. It has a stable state. And all the time that we've been talking, this monostable has been in its stable state. And if you look at the output, the output is off. And it's stayed off, and it's not going to come on unless I make it come on. So the stable state of a monostable is to be off. Now, if I were to draw this on a diagram, I'd have to draw a timing diagram. I'm going to draw my timing diagram freehand again. So here is my, I'm going to draw an input line, and here is my output line, like that. These axes here are time. This axis here is going to be voltage eventually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one for the input, one for the output. So the idea is that the output is stable in its off state. So at the moment the output is off. There it is. If I press the button, see what happens? It comes on, which is great, which is represented by putting the, out, the line going up. But after a time, it goes off, because it doesn't like to stay on. That's not a very good pen. I'll get a better one. Probably should have practiced beforehand. Along there, up there, along there, it goes off. Back to its stable state. And if I press the button again, it comes on. It stays on for the same length of time again. And it goes off again. So this is my output, which is often labeled Q. Okay. Now my input is slightly different to uh, the inputs you might expect with logic gates. I don't know if you can see here, but the, the, the pull-up resistor is connected to positive. It comes along this yellow wire. So at the moment, if I took the switch out, 
the input is only connected to positive. It's not connected to anything else. So therefore, the input is usually at logic 1, connected to positive. So my input is normally at logic 1. Now let's have a look and see when the monostable actually comes on. Is it on when I press the button or when I let it go? So let's have a look. Press. It comes on when I press the button, not when I let it go. So when this button is pressed, what happens is that's when my monostable turns on. It doesn't have to stay pressed, so I can let it go again. It goes back up high. And until I press it again, and even if I hold it on for a bit longer, it does that. So this is my input, which is normally high. OK, and you see here that I've, I've shown that even if I have a short input, the output stays on for a fixed length of time. And if I have a slightly longer input, one, two, three, and let go, it still stays on for pretty well the same amount of time, just judging by I, not by timing yet. And the components which determine the time period are these two components here. So we're going to have a look at those in a moment. However, there is one problem. Let me just do this again. And this is a major problem, which I'll come back to. You press the button. The LED comes on. One, two, three, four, five, something like that. If I press the button and hold it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is a problem. The monostable doesn't go off if I hold the button down. And that's not always what I want. So this is a major drawback with the 555 monostable. Is it only a monostable if you let the button go quickly enough? If you keep the button pressed down, it's not a very good monostable. And watch now, as soon as I let the button go, it goes off. So it's a monostable, but it's not a very well-behaved monostable. Let's see if we can work out the calculations. So I'll just get a piece of paper here to do this one. And if we read the values, what we should know from our theory for this monostable is that T, the time period, is equal to 1.1 times by the resistor times by the capacitor. Which resistor, which capacitor? Well, it's this resistor here, the timing resistor. And if I have a look at that, that's 47K. It's got a yellow, violet, and an orange. And it's determined by this capacitor here, my capacitor value. And if I take it out, I don't know if we can see, but it's 100 microfarads. You might just about be able to see that there. I'll put it back in, hopefully in the right place. So C is 100 microfarads. So we should be able to work out the time period. So T equals 1.1 times by 47 times 10 to the 3, which is the K bit, times by 100 times 10 to the minus 6, which is the micro bit. So getting my calculator out, we should be able to work out what T is, which has just gone off the bottom of my page. So just one moment. So here's my calculator. OK, so I'm going to do the calculation now. It's going to be 1.1 multiplied by 47 times 10 to the 3. Notice the exponent button is the 10 to the power, times by 100 times 10 to the minus 6 equals, and I get 5.17 of my answer. So what I should find is that if we're very lucky, T equals 5.2 seconds. Now, we can obviously test this. So all we need is a stopwatch. So we'll get our stopwatch out. OK, here's our stopwatch. And let's have a go. Ready, steady, go. So we'll watch to see when this goes off. And there we go. 6.12 seconds. OK. And you may say, well, that's not very good because it doesn't actually work. Well, it has my reaction time in there. But more importantly, the tolerance on this capacitor is about 20%. So realistically, this is plus or minus 20%. And 20% of 5 seconds is 1 second. So we're within our tolerance. It just means this capacitor has probably got a bigger value than the 100 microfarads. Now we're going to move on and look at the NAND gate monostable, which is made out of NAND gates. 
And in the GCSE course, you're not required to draw this, but in the A-level course, you are. So I'm going to draw it out anyway. And it's made out of NAND gates. So we have a NAND gate just here, which is this chip here. We have the power supply, which is my 9 volts here. And we have our 0 volts power supply running along here, which we've seen before. The same input arrangements as before, we have a resistor, which is a pull-up resistor here. So again, we have the resistor doing its job as a pull-up resistor. And then we have a push button, which is referenced to my yellow push button just here. And again, my yellow push button connects down to ground just here. So this input here goes into one input of my NAND gates, that's the yellow wire. The output of my NAND gate, um, the output of my NAND gate, which is the white wire here, then goes across to my capacitor, which again is an electrolytic capacitor. Call that the wrong way around, so I'll just fill that in that way. Electrolytic capacitor, just here. The electrolytic capacitor connects to the orange wire, and as you can see, there's a resistor which goes down to ground. So the resistor here and the capacitor here are my two timing components, the same as we had before. The orange wire goes back to my NAND gate where the inputs are connected together. So what this is doing, this is two inputs to my NAND gate connected together. So that's effectively a NOT gate. Okay. And then the output from this one is this green wire, which loops back to where we started from. So this is the key feature of this monostable, is that it loops back round to the start like that. And there's my monostable drawn. But as you can see, this green wire goes up and carries on. So I actually have another NAND gate again with the two inputs wired together. So it's another NOT gate. And then from there, oops, my zero line's not going to work. I have my resistor, which is this one just here, and my LED, this one just here. So I'll just carry that naught volts on. That's a really bad diagram now, but never mind. 470 ohms. And that's my NAND gate monostable, which the A-level students certainly should be able to draw. And we'll have a look at what this one does. Well, monostable means stable in one state. So here it is. The stable state is with the LED off again. So if I were to draw my timing diagram, I would end up with exactly the same diagram as I did with a 555. So I'll just draw one out. So here's my input coming along there. Here's my output coming all the way along there. This is time. This is going to be my voltage coming in. So what we'll do is we'll just see if it actually works first of all. Press the button. There it is. It's come on. I always like it when that happens. You say these things are going to work and they do. So we'll make it come on. And how do we do that? Well, what we did is we pressed the button briefly and it came on. So that represents, always draw the dotted lines, that represents the input being high because it's connected to positive. You press the button, it goes low. So that's a falling edge. It goes back up again because I let go very quickly and the output stays on. Now you may remember that with the previous monostable, the 555, what happened is that if the output went low and it stayed low and it never came back on again, then we had a real problem because the output just stayed on, which was not very good at all. So what we're going to do here is we're going to see what's going to happen in this case. So what I'll do is I'll draw my dotted line on here and we'll see what actually happens. So I'm going to press the input button and I'm going to hold it down and we'll see what happens. Here we go. Press the button, hold it down, still held down, still held down, still held down, and the output goes off. So this monostable is a true monostable in that actually the output is on for a set amount of time whether or not you hold the input button down. So this is a much more useful monostable than the 555 one. Okay, so there's our timing diagram. So this is the input, okay, which is normally high. And here is my output. is normally labeled Q, as we've had before. Right, let's carry on and have a look at some calculations. The calculation for this type monostable is very similar, but it just uses a different constant. So in this case, T equals 0.7 RC, although that can depend an awful lot on the exact logic gates that you use, but we're going to see whether this is going to work. So this is my timing resistor, this one just here. And again, R is 47 kilo ohms. And this is my timing capacitor, and if I take it out and have a look at it, I will see it's the same 100 microfarads we had before. don't know if you can see that on the camera. Put it back in, carefully in the right place. 
So C equals 100 microfarads. So this is the same time as we had before, same component, sorry. So T equals 0 0.7 times by R, which is 47 times 10 to the 3, times by C, which is 100 times 10 to the minus 6. So let's work out what T is. We'll just get our trusty calculator out again. So here we go. Okay. Right, so let's see if we can do this. It's going to be 0 0.7 multiplied by 47 times 10 to the 3 multiplied by 100 times 10 to the minus 6, which is the micro. So that's 3.3 seconds. So shorter for the same component values, shorter than the 555 because it's only 0 0.7 RC. Let's see what the time actually is. Now remember in the last one we had an issue where the time didn't work out properly because the capacitor was the wrong value. So let's see how this one gets on. Ready, steady, go. And 3.4. It's not the same capacitor that I've used this time, so this one ha happened to be a lot better. Okay, so that's pretty good. We'll put a tick and we'll even put a smiley face because that's fantastic, it actually works. Okay, so this is the NAND gate monostable, which is the monostable of choice if you want one that actually works as a monostable when it's supposed to.